Hi there, my name is Amy Murphy and I'm here at Yoga Grow in downtown Fredericton. This short video is a sample of a typical yoga for runners and cyclists class. So this is a brilliant little sequence that'll give you a good feeling of what this class might be like and it'll also stand strongly alone just to use it as a stretch to relieve your legs, your hips. Hope you enjoy. So you'll begin in a downward dog, but you'll use tabletop and plank pose to get there. To find a clean tabletop position, get your hands beneath your shoulders, knees beneath your hips, and really spread your fingers out. Then with one foot at a time, use very long legs to set up a plank pose. You stretch one foot back, you're on your toes and a little bit on the ball of your foot. The other foot follows. You already get some tension here with your heels moving backwards, your skull and your ears moving forwards. You can roll yourself into a downward dog by closing the space between your chin and your chest. Push down, let your back get a little bit round as you roll up. As your chest seeks out your thighs, your hips do stick up. And for today's purposes, keep a narrow stance, let your big toes touch together. And take a few breaths like this. Stretch your right leg up into the air. When it's reached its height, just let your hip open and your knee bend. This is your three-legged dog. Allow it to be flexible. Take advantage of the gravity that's helping to hang in your right calf. But smooth out and roll your right shoulder down so you're not losing all stability in the shoulders as you're in this asymmetry. A few breaths, again, to open the right hip crease. And then start to build your body up stronger. Move your heel purposely into your sit bone. Close your hips square with your legs still very bent. Find that you round your spine again to help move your knee into your nose and eventually pass this right foot to the top of the mat. You can definitely use hands to help boost that leg into place. My hands have gotten lighter. You can see that here. Allow your weight to lay over your front leg and then just relax your left knee down. Follow it by untucking those left toes. For purposes of calm and breath, allow yourself to have your torso attached to this front leg and really breathe against it. So get calm in that practice of feeling your ribs expanding against that front bent leg. Add posture to it, roll your shoulders back, squeeze your elbows. And then lift your toes of that right foot off of the floor. Eventually lift the whole foot and have a good, strong feeling of pulling the foot back towards your shin bone. And then all at once, you begin to straighten out this front leg. You take the posture out of your torso and you add a round spine. You also add round hips. Pull your sit bones down toward the backs of your knees so your glutes are on, they're plugged into you. Bend your knee in the direction of your face. So you treat this like a floss now. Return onto that right footprint very fully. Push your left hip crease, the open hip crease forward and raise your gaze, pull your shoulders back. I'll take you through a couple of those. Pick up your toes, pick up the whole foot, dig your heel into the mat and round your spine as you allow your torso to cover this right leg. Both sit bones pulled down, really seeking their place, their fitting on the backs of the hamstrings. Bend your leg towards your face. Roll your chest open as your footprint pulls your weight further forward into the room. Then stay in this next one. The toes pluck up, the heel digs down. Keep a straight right leg. And let your work be fixated on rolling the right outer hip back and down and still pushing the left hip crease forward and hopefully hiking it up. After you've had a few breaths there, really allowing some space to happen, some disbursement to happen throughout the back of this right leg, it's time to curve yourself into your lunge pose again. Knee to face, foot to floor. 
And leaning forward, a bit sloppy, a bit messy here. Completely change your lunge pose by piling one hand onto the front leg at a time. The sit bone roll down that I already described in that last hamstring stretch happens in a very harsh way here. Push down into your hands and really pull down on both sit bones. You'll become a lot more vertical. Your butt down, your left hip crease nice and open. As if to directly aid in the sensation in this left hip, go ahead and raise your left arm up. Your fingers straight towards the ceiling, your thumb towards the wall behind you. Keep the shape, but lunge into the front leg. And then just back out part way via the pull down of your sit bones. Motion in your glutes, your butt towards the backs of your knees. Let the hamstrings almost push back to fight that purpose, that feeling. So your legs are on in order to let the front hip crease open up. Lift up higher, so add that torso emphasis with your left arm. Look to your right, and then take a little side bend over to that side. So without collapsing too much, you want to still have a hike in the right armpit. Then use all kinds of advantages to help yourself come back to center. Push into the sole of the right foot, the top of the left foot. Shrug the left shoulder blade cleanly and neatly onto your back to pull yourself up to center. Pile your hands to the inside of this front leg, both of the hands slightly to the left. And then just shift your right leg around so you're in a tabletop position. Hands beneath the shoulders yet again. Let the right toes spin out quite a bit so your leg is perpendicular. The left toes stretch back. Come onto the arch of the left foot so you'll notice the left hand gets light. And then bend your elbow and turn your body up and open into a side plank. You can rearrange in any way that you need to, to enable yourself to push down with your hand and with your top side of the right foot, but lift up and out through right armpit, through left fingers, your back toes might be pointing your left quad really on, your kneecap lifted. Stretch the top arm over your ear. You're likely getting much of the same side body stretch that you had when you were in your lunge with your arm lifted. Just a little bit more emphasis in this new shape, new experience. Reach fingers and toes away from one another and look down at your front hand. You'll roll into your first cat pose. Your arm pulls you into shape. The right toes spin back, the left knee joins. Push the floor down. It's okay if the hands are ahead of your shoulders. Tuck your toes, then from this place, this experience, rise to your downward dog. Feel your body fit into place. Then just before we switch sides, a couple of deep flosses within your downward dog. Bend your neck so your head is up. The chain of your body is a little bit broken. Lift your heels and then bend your knees so that you're hovering. It might take effort from your guts or your arms to hold you here. And you hope for a stretch of the feet, maybe elsewhere. Push your hips back up, have that inevitable fall of your head. Just do that one more time. Big leg bend, shin bones hover, your fingers are printed hard into the floor. Raise the hips back up as if they're yawning. I'll go through that on the other side, possibly a little quicker. Let your left hip open your knee bends. No need to do it faster, but now you have the information. Close your hip, hike your belly to pull that knee beneath you. Move forward enough that you can deliver that left foot. You can also boost it with your hand if need be. Relax the right knee down, relax the right toes, and find that you're breathing against the leg that's practically holding you up. So you're in a bit of a passive lunge right now. Then posture it, roll your shoulders back, you're light on your fingers. Let the left toes pluck up and off the floor, they're spread, and then pick up the whole foot, and then decide to straighten this left leg. Once you feel the thigh click into place, with great certainty, pull both sit bones down, so you scoop your seat below you, 
You raise your belly effectively away from that scoop. And bend your knee, motion forward. You pile your weight into the room. You allow yourself to lean into that right hip crease and you lift. Toes lift, foot lifts, leg becomes straight. The left hip is vacuumed back. And do a couple more. Bend your knee in the direction of your face. Be certain about that footprint and roll your chest open. Get a little space in your front. Lift your toes, pull yourself back. And just do that a final time. Lay your weight into that front foot. Bend your knee. Open your chest. And then stay this next time. The foot is propped up. The toes are dragging back. Both sit bones are certainly pulling down. Your hip creases rise up on both edges. Both sides of the belly are lifted. A little bit more fight happening in that right hip crease. After a few breaths, after time has dispersed and changed that sensation in the back of that left leg, bend into the front knee, messy lunge pose, and stack it up one hand at a time. Let your torso find this confident vertical and then make it even greater by shoving the hands down and pulling both sit bones down so you're very lifted. Take a moment to sense this new length, this new sensation. Both sit bones still finding their way into your hamstrings. So it's a muscular blend happening in the back of your legs. Your right arm goes up. Certainly a stretch in the front of that right leg. And anywhere along that whole right chain, perhaps the armpit, perhaps the tricep. Fingertips up and backwards. Then we let up only a little bit, lunge into the front leg. But then balance it by still securing the sit bones down. So it's about a part way back out. Shift gaze left. Lift up high, come up and over your front leg. Some resistance, some strength rising in this left underarm. So you're not just falling over to the side back. The pressure of the left printed foot, the top of the right foot, are part of what helped hoist you up. Shift. Shrug the right shoulder blade down, come up with strength, and then easy exit both hands to the right. Take your foot back behind you here, back into your tabletop is how you'll refer to this. Kick the left toes out, so your side planking the other way. Stretch the right foot back until you can't help but abandon this right arm and reach. A few breaths just to get away from the floor. And then angle it so that you're shaping that right side of your body again. Your finger is defying your toes. The left hand going down, the left armpit rising up. Tuck your chin, switch your gaze, bend your right wrist down and pull yourself around into a very reaching cat pose. Long arms, knees tight together, belly shrugged up. And then a downward dog. And then however many flosses you'd like to take, break the down dog pose by looking up, then bend the legs a lot, stretch out your feet, make decisions about how long you'd like to stay or how much you'd like to repeat that little leg pump, almost restricting and returning some blood flow in the backs of those legs, backs of the knee in particular with this big bend. And there you have it. That's a mini class. That's something that would be incredibly effective, maybe even following a run. Let me know if you have questions, and you can always join us Mondays at 5.15. Thank you.